Welcome back to part 6 of my 3D game design tutorial in Construct. Now one of the biggest issues we're going to encounter today is working with collisions on a 3D plane. So currently Construct is very much 2D, even this editing space is very much 2D, and most of the logic is still built around 2D ideas. So for example my player is standing just above this block at the moment, which is absolutely fine, but if we were to go to this block on the left hand side, or this one down here, which is much lower than our player, it still classes that our player is overlapping this block. We can even have a case where our player is underneath the block, and the game would still think that our player is overlapping it, because in the 2D space that it's checking, our player is overlapping it. This makes collisions really difficult, because currently in our code, we've got this custom behavior set out to move out solid, so if we are in a solid object, or try and go into a solid object, it pushes us out the way. So if we actually add gravity, as soon as we get into this block, it's just going to push us out in any direction. We don't want that, we want to sit comfortably on this block. Let's tackle this problem with a little bit of code. So first thing we're going to do is we're going to take our global variables, I'm just going to add a new one. And this one's going to be on ground. This is just to check if we're touching the ground or not. And again, there are built-in systems to do this, not for 3D engines, just for the 2D mode. So this is going to be a boolean, and it's going to set to false. I'm going to come down, I'm going to add an event. I'm going to start by adding every tick. And this is going to be our gravity control. And we want to actually use that boolean straight away. So I'm going to add a new condition. System is boolean set. And we're going to say is on ground. And we're just going to invert that to false. Because we only want gravity to be applied if we're not on the ground. We want that to be applied every tick if that's not the case. Once we've done that, we can take our action. I'm going to take our player and scroll right down to the bottom. To Z elevation. We're going to use this a lot today, it just means their height in the world. So we're going to take the player's current Z elevation and we're just going to minus what I want our gravity to be. In this case 0.5 I find is a really good amount. You can play around that number, the higher it is the faster you pull. We're then going to go down to a new event, we're going to do system, every tick, and we're actually going to take our 3D shape and disable the solid collision. Again, the solid collision is working great to check the side of the blocks, but for above and below, it doesn't work very well. So we're going to disable it unless we need it on. So let's do a check to work out why we might need that on. So we're going to take our 3D shape, and we're going to compare its Z elevation. And what we want to do, first of all, is do less than or equal to, and we're going to start by taking the player's current height. We're going to minus self. And it's really important that we get the Z height and not the regular height. They're two very different things. And if you get the normal height, it won't work in your code. So we're going to minus the Z height of our shape plus one. We're then going to add another condition. We're going to take our 3D shape. And we're going to compare the Z elevation again. And this time we're going to check for greater than the player's dot z elevation, like so. So what we're checking for here is if the player is at the edge of the block and it's just below the bottom of the block, and if it's at the top of the block, we want to have that solid collision on. If we go above that, so we're above the height of the block or we're below the height of the block, then we're going to disable it. So 3D shape dot enable. So our collisions we've set up already still work, but now we're going to disable that solid collision if we're above or below the block and overlapping it. And that's going to be really important for checking our on-ground behaviours. So we're going to add a new event. That's really important we get 3D shape for this one and not the other way around. And we check if that's overlapping the player. We make sure it's that way around, not the player overlapping the 3D shape. We also need to add a couple more conditions to check if the player is indeed on top of the block. So 3D shape, again we're going to compare the height of the 3D shape. Now you don't have to do this too much with 2D game design, and again it's just because these systems don't exist, so we're having to build them ourselves. So I'm going to check greater than player dot z elevation minus self, self being the current version of the 3D object, dot z height and again make sure you got z height and not the regular height we're then going to add one final condition to this one 
3D shape, scroll down, compare Z elevation, and this time we're going for less than, and very similar to what we had before, we're going to take the player's Z elevation, we're going to minus self.height, and then we're going to add a bit of a buffer of plus 5. So this means that we take the top of the block, and then we check just above it a little bit further, and if the player's in that range, then we're classing them being on ground. Now if we don't have this plus 5 and we just check if it's equal to, it's possible that our player position can be just out of the range and skip it, especially if our gravity is set quite high. So we don't want that, so that little buffer is just there to make sure we're getting them on top of that block at the right time and we're not missing it by any chances. If they are on top of the block, we want to do two things. So first we can go to our system and we can actually set our boolean on ground to true. This now breaks gravity, so gravity is no longer working and keeps our player flat on that block. The second thing we want to do is readjust the player's position. So we're going to scroll down to set Z elevation. And what we're going to do for this is we're going to take the 3D shape dot Z elevation plus we need the height of the shape as well to make sure we're on top of the shape. And again, it's the Z height that we want for that one. So we've got one final thing to do before we're able to test, is right click on here. We're just going to add this else statement. We're just going to say if it's not the case, if we're not on ground, then what do we want to be? And it's just simply not on the ground, so gravity starts applying again. So anytime we move away from the objects, we fall off it, we jump. We're not going to be on the ground, so gravity is going to apply again. So let's test this. So obviously we fell through there. I've just checked here and I've got a normal height instead of a Z height. So if you get that same problem, just check your Z heights are on there. Just going to quickly scan through. Looks good. Let's test it again. So I land on top. I'm on top of my block. I'm able to move around. And I might be able to make this gap if I run. And you see that I fall off down to the next one. We'll try and do one more. And I fall off there. And then if I go onto another thing, I just fall right down to the bottom of the world. Final thing I want to look at today, because it's quite an easy fix, is just jumping. So we're just going to add one more final action. Keyboard and on key pressed. We're just going to do spacebar for this. And then hit done. And for the action, there's lots of ways to do jumping. I'm going for something really, really simple. And you'll see this doesn't give us the cleanest jumping movement, but it is a way that we can implement jumping quite quickly. You can take the player's Z position. So set Z elevation. This is going to be set to the player's current Z elevation. And then we're just going to add 50 to it. So higher the number, the higher they jump. But if we play this now and I jump, you'll see that I jump. So it's not the best. You'll see that I'm flying quite a bit. It's sort of a push right up. Obviously, if you want to spend more time with this project, then having a look at other jump methods is a really great way. I also want to just do another check and add another condition just to check my players on the ground when they jump. So is Boolean set on ground? And this just stops them being able to jump infinitely into the air. So they can now just jump once and they fall back down and they can jump again, making it so we can make some of these bigger gaps. So I hope you've learned something from this and you're able to start learning some of the 3D tools in Construct. I'll probably be doing one more video on how to restart the level when we die, reset our position, and looking at the fog mechanic as well that we've seen quite a lot of games and was introduced quite recently into Construct 3. If you've enjoyed this video, please like, comment, and subscribe, and I'll see you in the next one.